welcome everybody. I'm Dr. Karen Panetta and I am the chair of the IEEE Awards Board. We are here today to celebrate the 2022 IEEE Dennis J. Picard Medal recipient for radar technologies and applications sponsored by Raytheon Technologies to Dr. Moen S. G. Amin. Dr. Amin, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Your work has inspired so many diverse applications, but before we get into your work, let's talk a little bit about your background. First of all, how did you even get into radar engineering? Well, uh, you know, I was always good in math, right? And uh, applied math you know, intrigued me, especially uh, towards applications that have immediate uh, impact on, on society. and. Uh, uh, when I finished my PhD, I did uh, some work in you know related areas to radar, but not really in the core uh, mainstream. Uh, but it was until uh, maybe 2000 uh, when we received the major funding from the uh, U.S. government agencies, um, and we proposed actually through the wall radar imaging at that point. Uh, maybe we were the first uh, or ones of the first to, to do so. And uh, luckily, we were able to build labs and, and get real data. We built walls and uh, we applied radar through walls. And uh, it was very, uh, very intriguing, the phenomenology and uh, how much the physics will allow you actually to see through walls. Um, and with this real data and some of our understanding, we were able to maintain this funding. Uh, from several DOD agencies and uh, for almost 15 years. And we built a reputation actually worldwide to be the Thrall Imaging uh, campus. So we attracted uh, so many uh, students who would come here for one or two years. We would co-advise them and they would collect data and they will give them some problems. And also many faculty from uh, all over the world, from Europe, Australia, and others came here for sabbatical. Uh, so it was very uh, vibrant uh, center. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm very actually fortunate to have received this funding and uh, to be able to collaborate with so many uh, great scientists and engineers from all over the world in this area. Now, you talked a lot of, about, you know, see-through walls, and it sounds like science fiction, <laughs> you know, or a Superman x-ray vision, things like that. But you didn't just use it for DOD applications. You had the foresight to say, this can really be so impactful in our homes and our communities, keeping us safe um, and helping the elderly. Can you talk about some of these applications? Yes, yes. So certainly many things we do, even if supported with DOD, right? It's a dual purpose, right? So there is always a commercial civilian application. Sometimes the commercial civilian applications actually uh, are more intriguing and, uh, and more tangible. Uh, so all along when we worked through all imaging, uh, that was a dual purpose, right? So uh, it, it was looking through walls uh, to uh, maybe detect anomalies that could be important for law enforcement and others, right? Uh, but we always had an eye about what else can we do? How can we bring radar to the uh, commercial applications and to the consumer electronics? And that somehow took us to uh, use it for in-home monitoring, right? And because what we learned actually uh, work, uh, doing work in small imaging and how we can uh, classify motions in terms of uh, the gait and the swinging of the arms and so forth so on. I say, wait a minute, right? Uh, there is an application uh, for in-home monitoring where radar can uh, tell us whether the person uh, fell or, uh, you know, uh, stood, uh, sat, uh, kneeled, bent, so far so on. That could be certainly very important, especially fall detection. Uh, uh, is very important for uh, aging in place and assisted living. So uh, we were fortunate to get some funding there and actually we took the radar to retirement uh, facilities here in Philadelphia and uh, we let the radar actually look at uh, uh, many of the, uh, the members there, you know, people walking with canes, people mm -hmm. uh, with certain abnormal gates and uh, standing, sitting and 
to my surprise, there was so much interest. I mean, uh, people there, uh, the retirees, asked so many difficult questions. Right? So we collected real data and uh, we were able to show that we can do lots of good things in, in detecting faults. Uh, and then we worked with industry, uh, with Comcast, and they had certain ob different objectives uh, from fall. Uh, it's about looking into whether the person, you know, change routines, daily routines. You know, uh, if a person sits on a couch for two hours today, uh, uh, but he used to sit five minutes yesterday, so why is he? Is he ill? Is so? It's, it's, it's amazing how many. Uh, uh, Commercial applications, uh, you know, you can, you can. Uh, well, I, I know that I could put it on my kid, and I'd see that he watches video games. <laughs> That's <long>. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about, you know, the, um, back then when you developed the technology, you know, the AI and machine learning really weren't even on the forefront. Yes. I mean, you've also been really um, a dynamic and in, in keeping up with the times. And tell me how about machine learning and artificial intelligence? Like, how are you utilizing that in your world now? Yes, certainly. I mean, machine learning, artificial intelligence is becoming so important in solving problems uh, where modeling is is not easy, I and mean, you have nonlinear modeling and things like that. So, uh, in through all imaging, uh, you know, Maxwell's, Maxwell's equations are linear equations. So we were able to do so many things uh, before the emergence of this recent trend in deep learning. And uh, right. but now, uh, uh, you know, we are we are moving from a model-based approach to data-driven approach. You know, which mm -hmm. is the science, and uh, we can certainly broaden uh, the classifications and the understanding by uh, employing uh, advances in machine learning. All right, so now uh, uh, we don't have to uh, select certain features mm -hmm. to know, for example, whether the person is uh, moving, swinging one arm or two arms, right? Or, or and having his, uh, his hands in his pockets, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll collect the data and let the machine learning uh, do the, all the classifications, right? But it's so important, by the way, not to be carried away with machine learning. You need to understand the phenomenology and the physics mm -hmm. in order to be able to interpret the data and appreciate what's going mm -hmm. on. Right? So it cannot just be a black box and uh, forget about uh, the uh, the physics and science and phenomenology. That's very important. Right. A lot of, and that's part of the, the biggest myth today is so many folks forget that you need context of the data. And even they, though they say they're data driven, they don't really look at the data. They expect the magic box, the AI to tell them. You know. and, and, and yes, absolutely. And by the way, the, the radar is uh, unlike uh, images, unlike optical images. It's not easy to uh, to generate lots of real data, right? Uh, so uh, sometimes you uh, people use machine learning for radar, but they don't have they have data insufficiency and mm -hmm. can give you misleading results. Mm -hmm. And so one of the nice things I like about everything you're doing is. It, it, for young folks, they usually say, when I teach them, I teach digital logic, and they'll say, well, I don't want to do, I don't want to do software, and I don't want to do a lot, you know, um, analog, <laughs> and, and now you're showing us, you know what, you, you do it all, right? So, I mean, talk about the interdisciplinarity of all the work that you do. Yes, absolutely. The interdisciplinary is so important, but, you know, it doesn't come early. Uh, a person must have a home, right? So, the home is the, the depth, is the technical background. You know, for example, you know, I can, I am, I'm a radar person, right? So now I can go and, and, and join somebody else who, let's say, in robotics, and let's say can I join hands, but he has the ex robotics expertise, I have the radar expertise, so the interdisciplinary will become very natural, right? And it becomes a problem driven, right? So. People can say, well, I can only do interdisciplinary. No, let the problem define uh, the interdisciplinary, right? But first of all, a person has to be knowledgeable about his own area of expertise. Mm -hmm. So interdisciplinary cannot proceed early on in the career, right? It's mm -hmm. actually supposed to culminate after a person understands uh, the depth and the knowledge uh, in a specific area that makes him uh, an expert, that can uh, he can lend his expertise and form an interdisciplinary uh, research team. So that's very important. 
Thank you. Um, I, I want to back up before you were even Dr. Amin. I want to know who got you interested. Was there a role model in your life that helped get you or any role models along the way that have inspired you to get into engineering or have informed your career? Uh, you know, my, my father, uh, my, my mother was a housewife and my father was a lawyer. Uh, my sibling, one is uh, uh, the law degree uh, from uh, Southampton in, uh, in UK. Uh, my sister is uh, pharmacology <laughs> from Ohio State. <laughs> And my brother has uh, other brother has a PhD in mass media and communication. So engineering really was not part of uh, <laughs> the fabric of the family, right? But as I said, you know, I was uh, interested in, in applied mathematics, and uh, electrical engineering certainly intrigued me because it's an area where uh, mass uh, is, is important to, to solve uh, complex problems. Uh, so I went to, into engineering, and I always thought of myself as uh, an academician. Uh, I, I like teaching a lot. In fact, uh, looking, observing uh, my high school teachers and undergraduate and the graduate uh, classes taught by uh, remarkable people, I, I observed their teaching styles uh, and uh, I picked some of here, some of this. So, so I put it together and I <laughs> claimed it as my own, but that's actually cheating. So I like teaching, I like lecturing, and I like actually to contribute uh, to the education of the next generation. That's why I always say to even to my colleagues here, uh, do not uh, uh, do only research, right? Uh, do not do only administration, right? Even if you are a chair or a dean, uh, try to teach, right? Because that's uh, it gives you uh, an immediate uh, gratification uh, to, you know, uh, research, yes, absolutely, but that's a long term. But, you know, just getting into class, teaching it, doing your best, explaining the material, and then leaving the class, you get immediate reward. Right? Mm -hmm. so that was very important. So I like teaching because uh, it, 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 is, it makes me kind of feel uh, very good about my contribution, self-value. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was uh, certainly important. That's why I stayed in academia. And that's why... I never stopped teaching, even if I had all the funding, which sometimes millions of dollars, right? I could have bought out, uh, as the many people do. No, I actually insisted that I teach every single semester. Wow, for wow. Five years, right? So that's really very, uh, very important. Wow, and, and I'm sure your students, you know, are, are cherishing your every, every word, because I do like the way you said that you created your own persona of teaching by taking the best. And I think that that's something I always tell students is I, I, I think that's the best way to do it, to see how other people do it. And then you you make your own recipe. So I don't think it's cheating, you know. <laughs> in the end, it does come out to be, you know, your unique your, your uniqueness that that stands out. Can you can you tell me more about um, you know, the the how I triple E and students, so you know, um, has it informed your career at all? Yeah, IEEE is is uh, is my technical home, uh, I, and I I always say when I meet uh, folks and uh, conferences and workshops and IEEE, you know what I tell them? I say, well, uh, uh, I'm proud to be an IEEE member, and I enjoy all the information and the knowledge I gain uh, by uh, reading the transactions and attending the conferences. But most what I like and in depth and depth for the IEEE, that they have introduced me to people that otherwise I would never have met them. People with great characters, great minds, right? Uh, so when, sometimes when I go to conferences and chat with a, a colleague from, uh, from US or from the Europe or you know, from the Southeast Asia, I said, how, how else and where else could I have met this person if it wasn't under the auspices of the IEEE? So, IEEE has left uh, great, great uh, marks in, in, uh, in me. And uh, I, uh, I always say that uh, uh, you have, I have a home, uh, that's my family, and then I have a much bigger family, and that's mm -hmm. IEEE. And so, you know, we, we spoke a lot about the technical skills and things like that, but for you to have the insight to look into these all these diverse areas of, uh, you know, d disaster, rescue, urban defense, surveillance, 
healthy aging. What other skill sets did you gather along the way? That's a great question. Uh, uh, really, I, I, I'm a very advocate of the fundamentals, right? Uh, I know sometimes uh, learning the fundamentals uh, is not easy and, uh, you know, it, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes sweating sometimes. But once you have the foundation, you can build so many things on the top of it, right? Mm -hmm. The deeper the foundation, the higher the construction. So uh, I would say to, to the students who would like to make a difference, uh, if I had made a difference, right, is to make sure, you know, take your time, uh, take the courses, uh, understand the material. Uh, some material is not going to come easy. Some material you're going to get stuck and you're going to try again and you're going to ask the professor, you're going to ask the TA and so forth. Do that, right? Don't rush because uh, rushing basically, sometimes you get only one time opportunity to get a, an undergraduate degree, to get a master's degree, to get a PhD degree. You know, I. I, I uh, spent two and a half years doing my master's and four and a half years doing my PhD. And uh, I could have stayed longer because I was learning, right? So uh, there is no reason to rush. There is no reason to expedite things and things. Uh, take your time, learn. It's a lifelong learning, you know, after the PhD, actually life starts. Uh, the learning starts after PhD, it does not stop. Mm -hmm. so take your time, learn, uh, uh, understand how what you learn benefits the society. The societal impact is so important. Mm -hmm. And mix that with great character, you know, humility, uh, uh, perseverance, and patience. And that's very important. Right. And I think that that's so impactful to say because um, as a dean and professor of students who start the program, say, well, how long am I going to be here? That's the first question, is they want to do a hit and run and get in and out. And 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 I think a lot of that's motivated by the need that, yes, we, you know, we're, we, we want to make a fine, we want to uh, financially be independent from our parents and, and have some um, forthright career on the path and get internships. And we're in such a rush to check the boxes sometimes. And I think that that's a, a really good point to make because we want to make sure that you do have confidence when you get out, that you do have skills and that you see the vision. Because if you just get out with a box of tools, right, and you don't know how to build anything. It, it, exactly. And also, by the way, uh, yeah, work hard, but also have leisure time. Uh, that's something I, 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 I believe that I had the right balance, right? Uh, so uh, just have have some downtime, have leisure time. Uh, don't not everything has to be structured, right? That's the way. In fact, I uh, grew up, right? So the summer, you know, we'll go traveling, we'll go to the beach, and we'll swim and have great time. But you know, when the when the academic year starts, it's a serious business. No kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, have a balance in your life. Uh, certainly, not everything work work. And, uh, you know, uh, family is very important because. Mm -hmm. So your final mission actually is towards your family uh, or final obligations. So, uh, you know, uh, all around person is very important, not only, uh, you know, and, and, and they actually feed into each other, right? Mm -hmm. When he has some downtime and some relaxation, his mind clears, he will be more innovative, he will be more, you know, great ideas and things will come through, mm -hmm. right? So that's also very, and also something also very important is that, uh, in, in our business, really, there are tendency to, to follow the crowd because everybody is doing this. Maybe I should be also be doing this, you know. Yes, it's important to be part of an emerging uh, ideas and technology, but also it's important uh, to have, uh, uh, to, to, to put out what you believe in, even if what you believe in is not that popular at that time. So sometimes you just have to stop a little bit and think through and say, well, uh, yeah, everybody's doing that. However, maybe they overlooked that one, right? So let me explore this a little bit. And sometimes we have tough time publishing this work because it's not fashionable, right? But uh, two or three years, five years down the road, you know, turn around and it becomes the state of the art. So that's, that's a great um, leap for, um, point here that I want to make because so many students come in, they have someone that they respect, a guidance counselor or a teacher who will tell them, don't do this or don't do that, or you can't do this. Have you ever had a challenge in your life where um, you've had a, like, 
you know, put, put the noise aside, filter out the noise, as I say, and, and just go your own way? Uh, again, I should say that's also a great question. You know, uh, advice can be given by somebody who's been there, done that, or uh, can be given by somebody uh, who would say, for example, you know, uh, you don't have to climb the mountains to know how high they are. Right? Mm -hmm. It's just there they have a feeling and uh, the maturity and the wisdom to to know uh, advice is very important uh, and uh, I you know I, I look at my parents uh, the precious advice that they give me uh, you know in terms of uh, following my passion and uh, uh, and uh, for, don't get distracted by the noise right just mm -hmm. see what your uh, passion is and to see what your interest is, and everybody is different. So what is good for someone is may not be good uh, for you, or you know, what worked for somebody uh, may not be working for you. But do not dismiss advice, you know, because sometimes the advice is uh, extracted from a long life journey, and uh, that will be like the, uh, the, the, the juice uh, uh, that comes out of uh, the, the, the life, the apple, right? So whoever giving you advice, you know, listen, trying to integrate it with your own feeling and your own thinking, and then set the course. Mm -hmm. Now, another one that, you know, a lot of folks look and say, oh, look at academics, you know, they're here, and then there's the people that are really doing it in the industry. You have had a wonderful academic career, but you've also had a profound interaction with industry. Can you talk about that? Yes, so, uh, uh, you know, there are problems, people call it academic exercise that doesn't have applications and uh, is far-fetched and is built on assumptions that uh, are neither tangible or practical, right? So, uh, let's try to work on problems uh, which will lead sooner or later to... Uh, to, to, to the market, to applications, right? Applications important uh, for uh, for humans and, you know, important for our life, uh, uh, important to make us uh, more productive, healthier, uh, live longer, uh, secure, uh, and, and so forth, so on, uh, smarter. So when I work on a problem, I always ask myself, what is the end game here? I mean, uh, the end game may not be tomorrow, right? The end game can can take two or three years, right? But you can start getting a feel when you start working on a problem that that will lead really to very nice application that will uh, service uh, humanity and will be very helpful uh, to the human being in general, right? Whether it is will improve economics, will improve security, will improve education, will improve sensing, will improve medical. Uh, so uh, it's, it's improve environmental uh, has environmental uh, component in it. So that's very important. Yes. So that's a nice that you you know you, you're not just looking at one entity. You're looking across every arena, um, but you're keeping the the options open. And I think that that's really commendable. Let's talk more about your students and and um, you know mentoring. You 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 obviously have a huge passion for mentoring, you know, most faculty would, <laughs> would write the check to get out of the teaching. Yeah, you know, no, not me. <laughs> not you. So, you know, let, let's talk about that. What What is it about, you know, how do you, how when you're mentoring students and they, let's say they want to go to graduate school, um, you know, or they decide to go get a job, what, what kind of advice do you have for them when they have to make those life critical juncture decisions? Yeah, for my uh, for my students and postdocs, I mean, we have a very close relationship. Uh, I work with them almost on a daily basis for for multi years, right? So it become like a family. In fact, you know me very well. I know them very well. I somehow I also know their passion and I know their skills very well. And I can tell that, uh, of course, as a, through an advice, right? I can advise them. You know, uh, really, this is strong points. And these are not as strong, uh, you know, these are skills you have, and this is skills that, you know, you may be missing. And uh, from my own experience, I would, for example, say, well, you know, uh, 
especially students who present uh, conference papers during their PhD program. And I get so many good uh, feedback about their presentations at conferences and so forth and so on. I say, listen, you know, you're, you're, you're a natural uh, teacher, right? So we, we consider really academia because you explain things very well. You, are, uh, 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 you always cite uh, previous work and you give credits to others and things. So I, I tell them, uh, I try to make them aware of their own uh, strengths and uh, without really influencing. The other guys, for example, can be hands-on people. They like the lab a lot. They like the experimentations, the data collections, uh, try to build things themselves. So, uh, you know, I can say, well, you know, I've certainly been... And some people actually have them all, right? I mean, that's difficult to recommend uh, whether they go to industry. Or... Well, make them do a startup company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, a startup company. But what's important, I mean, the, it's whatever they choose, they have to just have... They have to work hard uh, and... Uh, uh, observe ethics is very important because, you know, at the end of the day, um, it is how you serve the society, uh, right? We are just one small cell in a much bigger uh, uh, picture. And uh, it's important to emphasize uh, uh, excellence, uh, ethics, and uh, respect to others, and also teamwork. So because, you know, during their uh, graduate program, they likely to work alone. Right. Mm -hmm. But they go to industry or even go to academia where they have to collaborate uh, with other faculty, write joint proposals with industry working in a team or so. Mm -hmm. But they have to be able to uh, communicate. Uh, uh, and also, I stress in my, in my uh, group here, uh, the technical writing is very important. I learned technical writing from advisor, uh, Lloyd Griffiths. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I owe uh, my technical writing to him. And I'm very, very keen uh, to uh, teach and strengthen the technical writing of my own students before they do it, because if they cannot express themselves verbally or in, in, in writing, then ideas will, will go to waste. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned some things that you usually don't hear a lot of faculty talk about, and that's the importance of ethics. And, you know, um, you know, we, we always think about, oh, it's, you know, yes, you know, cite people and, but you brought it even further by talking about giving credit to others, which Very seems like in this day and age, it's hard for people to do that. They want to have, they want to shine, but, uh, you know, we, we hear there's lots of say, everybody says, well, you're a team, you're a team, but then you're like, well, where's my credit in there, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, very important, very important, because if if, if a person does not give credit to others, others will not give credit to him, right? It's mutual, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes when people read papers and say, wait a minute, this person never cited us, in turn, they're not going to cite him, right? So <laughs> it's two ways, <laughs> two ways street. <laughs> Well, I always tell I always tell my students, you know, you want to cite them because if they're reviewing your paper and say you didn't cite them, you think they're going to give you a good review? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also, by the way, I mean, in terms of in academia, so I always uh, tell my students who uh, who plan to go to academia or who went to academia, you know, don't despair if you get a paper rejected or a proposal declined. Try to uh, to look at the comments uh, and uh, you know try to factor factor them in address them in the next time around. Uh, the same thing with actually student comments, right? Sometimes the students' comments are critical. Uh, you should really look at the comments, trying to recalibrate the teaching, uh, revise the notes, uh, restructure the lectures, and so forth and so on. So there is always a good side. Uh, there's nothing called bad 100%, right? Mm -hmm. so perseverance, patience, and trying to look at the glass half full is very important. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, Dr. Amin, you have been a wonderful role model, an outstanding, exceptional uh, engineer, making huge impacts on the world. And, you know, we are so honored to have you with us today. So we want to congratulate you again on receiving the Dennis J. Picard Medal at, for Radar Technologies and Applications sponsored by Raytheon Technologies. And I hope to see you in person in San Diego in May. I, I'm humbled, I'm honored uh, uh, receiving this award and uh, uh, I will cherish uh, the award and, 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 and this moment uh, for the rest of my life. Thank you. Congratulations again. And thank you all for watching here today. Bye now.
Okay, thank you.